The story of the disaster that had happened on Everest in 1996 really captivated me. There's something so gripping about it and so fascinating. It's one of the, the great mysteries and moments on Everest. Anybody who climbs anywhere in the world knows that and has theories and opinions on what happened. And there is a sense of responsibility in terms of doing justice to it. No, no, yeah. Everyone associated with this film has been uh, deeply concerned about its authenticity and honoring the characters we filmed in Kathmandu and actually all the way up to almost 16,000 feet near the base of Everest. So that was very, very authentic. You know, we were in the place where it happened. There was a natural progression which I think really helped us all get into our parts. The foreignness of Nepal, the religion, you know, the, the music, the sounds, the food, and then you get out into the mountains. You're looking at one of the most spectacular views I've ever seen. I just saw a village up there, a frozen waterfall right there. One of the most incredible valleys I've ever seen right there. I just went through the town of probably the kindest people I've ever experienced. Pretty cool. Man. Nepal is a, a world unto its own. It's a beautiful place, but the infrastructure is not set up for typical movie making. Most of what you see as you're hiking up has been carried up by hand and by yaks. To think about an entire crew getting up there every morning and the logistics that it takes to do that is extraordinary. There are times where you have helicopters flying over from one unit to the next unit, transferring an actor to a stunt scene or then bringing them back for something else or bringing food to the second unit. It was a sight to behold. I've calculated we had over 190 to 200 individual helicopter landings in the approach to Mount Everest. It totally um, eclipsed any other logistical effort I had made in, in the Himalayas. I don't think anybody really knew the magnitude of what we had to put in place. When we got to Kathmandu, we couldn't get to the mountains, so we were sitting there, for, and after like two days, we were a day and a half behind. So then we had to sort of batten down everything and just get up to the mountains and shoot our way out. Seeing the crew up there on the mountain every day was the part that really kind of blew me away. I think we were like 15,000 feet, and that's, that's pretty high, man. <laughs> it was hard to breathe. You would walk and you'd take 15, 20 steps, you're like, it's so hard to walk there, people don't realize, even in the hills up towards Everest, you get this mountain sickness and it's just like every step is like three times harder than, than at home. It was dangerous for going up to the memorial and going too high too fast and having altitude sickness. So you have a camera guy sitting there and you know he's starting to feel like he has the most severe flu he's ever had and you're trying to do another scene but you don't even know your name because you're so altitude sick. The crazy thing is, you know, you're feeling those headaches and you're feeling all that, that pain at night and in the morning, and yet you can't wait to jump back in the helicopter and go up and see the most amazing things you've ever seen, and then realize that you're still only halfway to the top of Everest and you feel like that. If you look right through that gap, there's the summit of Everest. It is 100% real. It gives the film an absolute grounding. And because we shot it at the beginning, the actors got that too. So they had a recent, immediate experience of trekking up towards base camp that, that they could then use for the rest of the film. We're at 2,000 feet, 600 vertical meters to camp four. That's roped all the way. So I know you guys can do it, okay? I want you to enjoy yourselves. This is gonna be a nice walk up the hill. After leaving Nepal, we moved straight to Northern Italy in Valsenales, uh, right on the border between Northern Italy and Austria. There's only very few places you could go to that were going to match the rock and the landscape under the bright blue skies because that intensity of light at Everest is what we were hoping for. Valsanales was a really amazing place. It's very cold, it's windy. A lot of times you don't have to act, you're just trying to, to stay on the mountain during scenes. Yeah, these, these are pretty uh, windy, blustery conditions. It's blowing about you know, up to 40, 50 kilometers an hour on the side here at times. Uh, pretty miserable. A lot of fresh snow blowing around. The temperature is 7.7 .7 degrees centigrade. We have wind that's gusting 
from 10 to 15 to 20 kilometers per hour. So it's really hard on exposed hands and exposed flesh, especially for the camera team and the grips that have to grip bare metal. It's just kind of like Arctic filming conditions. It took them three days to get the wind machine up. And uh, when it came to it, we didn't need the wind machine. It was brutal. It was serious with avalanche warnings and you know having to move and our sets getting buried and Sherpas having to dig them out and yet you know we uh, we persevered and we got some hardcore stuff. Pull out Rob back back all it takes him boom the win. We had this uh, phrase that I said you know please no acting you know we are going for the visceral but the reality of it not putting on a character being somebody on a mountain. We do takes on this movie, 15 minute long takes, you know, Balthazar likes to roll and likes us to experience the elements and has pushed us in that way. I love that getting as close as you can come to the real thing is always fascinating. There's no substitute for how an environment really impacts upon you and whether that's freezing wind or, you know, driving sleet and snow and your inability to, to see properly and breathe properly. I'd rather suffer through that knowing that it's going to look authentic and amazing than be uh, uh, comfortable. Deep breath. People get bored of nice times, you know, that's like sitting in the sun for, for two months and you just get bored, you know. First day of shooting, minus 30 Celsius. I mean, you could hardly think it was so cold, you know. You get through it in a weird way, you know, and it looks great on film, you know, breath coming out of them and the, the, the coldness in their, their faces. You have to come together when you're uncomfortable. You have to, you know, and there was enough chaos on the set and chaos in the mountains that we all came together. We were on an expedition. We were a team, you know, from day one. We bonded very quickly. I mean, I can honestly say that I made friends on this and I know for a fact that they will be friends for the rest of my life. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we really went through something together, you know? You see the personalities of the characters come out, but you also see the actor behind it going through a massive amount of emotions. And in my own way, I got to watch these actors go through a trajectory of severe emotions. Hey, listen, mate, I've checked twice. Okay, I'm telling you, they're only okay. half full. Okay. It was an immersive experience. I think that's what people enjoyed. You know, we're able to get through the tough hours and, and, and you know, and, and the length of the shoot and, and, and the difficulties. These types of films and these types of shoots don't come around very often. So, you know, we all went off on a very big adventure together. We all had a very good time. We all had a really good time together. And, um, and it's not like a usual film set. If you're going to make a movie about people climbing up the highest mountain in the world, you need some sort of rugged individual to, to be the leader of that. Balthazar Cormacher is the perfect mix for the movie. There is a fearlessness to him. He wants this movie to be massive. He wants this movie to feel dangerous. He wants you to feel exhilarated in the process. Yet at the same time, there's a huge beating heart underneath it. That looked good. That's the best one. I call Balt the horse because he's like the he's like the strong man, you know, he's he's extremely competitive, and works so hard. He's not going to put you through anything that he wouldn't do himself. He's a great leader in that aspect. I trained a lot myself, bicycling in in a snowstorm at home, you know, like just getting myself into physical and mental state of being able to sustain focus through this kind of uh, adventure. His approach is so sort of gung-ho. He really doesn't want to hear that you can't do something. And I think the fact that he was an actor first and foremost before he became a director, his sense is like, you know, I've been an actor. I know what, I know what it's like and let's just do it. He's really interested in not just what he thinks he needs, but what the actors might bring beyond what he thinks he needs. So we're encouraged to bring something new on every take. And once he has what he needs, roll a couple more times and see if things uh, come out that, that he might think were more interesting than things that he might have, have thought could be part of the scene. And cut. For me, in the end of the day, Everest is a metaphor for any kind of ambition. Whether it's making movies, or whatever it is, you know, this is, this is the most clearest picture of that. There's only been one other movie before this film that I've made in my career that the environment of shooting has been similar to. And beyond anything, even more so than the movie itself, the relationships we have all made together have been incredible. This movie, this mountain, deserves that. 
I think Universal and Working Title know that, and I think they are working as hard as they can and have for so many years developing this project because they want to do service to all the people who perished and those who have been up there, have summited, have come down safely, and those who wish to in the future. Part of being human is reaching out to try and conquer different things. There's something in the human being who wants to do what Jake does in the movie, which is to, to touch the top of it. I think we've gone a long way towards doing that. <laughs>